So, welcome to the Green Garden Guys Lava Report. And garden. I'm down here on the ground because I've been gardening all morning and i uh, pooped. Oh, oh, oh. So, as far as the lava is concerned, first we lost Leilani Estates and my friend Jim's house. Later we lost Green Lake, which had been there for four or five hundred years when it boiled away. Then the lava ran into Capoho Bay and we lost the Champagne Ponds and the entire housing development out there and then it went ahead and continued on and we lost Waiapai Tide Pools. These are some of my favorite places on earth, were past tense. But now, last night, we lost Ahaluhani, the hot ponds. So no more soaking in natural geothermal pools down in Lower Puna. Well, I tell you, every time I really hurt everywhere, that was where we went. Had a beautiful county park down there where they turned the, uh, the uh, hot springs literally into a very, very large swimming pool. They got part ocean water and part fresh uh, geothermal heated water. It was nice. Oh, boy, oh, boy. It's gone. I imagine we'll eventually have some more hot spring pools down there because <laughs> there's plenty of volcanic activity to cause it, but... For the meantime, we have lost almost all of the really wonderful places down there at the coast that uh, most of us used to travel into that area to enjoy. It's all gone. Kind of sad, you know, I'm beginning to wonder about it all. Now, up in the National Park, uh, the caldera at Kilauea continues to collapse. Uh, it really has just changed shape. I saw some time-lapse photos uh, of the caldera falling in since June, and uh, it's, it has just increased in size. We keep getting those five-point earthquakes up there every time that the walls collapse. Uh, that's about it. Otherwise, the, uh, we lost a couple more houses in Leilani Estates last night, too, so the, the flows are kind of spreading out. But otherwise... Things remain pretty much the same. They just keep getting bigger all the time. As far as the garden's concerned, well, right here, I'm really pleased because we've got this here lobster claw heliconia that uh, I actually found it growing wild next to the post office <laughs> and pulled up a piece of it. I moved it in here only about eight months ago, and already they're beginning to grow and make flowers. I'm really happy about that. I really, really, really like heliconias, but the main reason I don't have more of them around the farm is that the ones that have the flowers that go upright, which would then gather water in here, they'll, they'll, they'll breed mosquitoes, and I don't need any more mosquitoes around here. So I've been really cautious anytime I bring in a heliconia to make sure I get one with the flowers that hang down so they don't fill up with water. I found this one. Um, I'll be adding a few more over time. Because it's really it's such a great cut flower. The heliconia cut flower will last for weeks and weeks. Anyway, let's go on out and take a look in the garden and see what's going on today. So well, I'm out here with the with the pineapples and the lily koi. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time after lunch trimming the lily koi back because it was overrunning the pineapples. Then I went through and I was weeding the pineapple rows. There's still more weeds, but I got the worst ones anyhow. And then I just came through and I fed all the pineapples over here. See right here, you can see the nice straight line haircut just like the one I just got. Uh, trimming the lily koi off of these two rows of pineapples over here, which had uh, been buried in the vines. Right over here is the part that I haven't gotten to yet. And as you can see, the pineapples are pretty much buried in passion vine. And there are weeds everywhere, so maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, I'm going to get in here and finish that part of the project. Christopher Shine and I you know, planted these lily koi vines uh, November 2016. We put in treated wood fence posts and hung grape wire on it, two strands, and then put a, a lily koi vine at the bottom of each post. Um, they're finally now... Uh, starting to flower like crazy, producing some beautiful, look at, oh man, look at these. We got all kind of fruit coming. Uh, so we're going to have lily koi for sale this year, I can see that. 
So let's see, what are we dealing with here now? Well, it took a year and a half, I guess, roughly. Roughly about a year and a half for these vines to come into production. Looking good. We got all manner of flowers out here. There's a lot, a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit hanging. I only fertilized them the one time when we put them in the ground too, uh, because I was worried with the rate they were growing that uh, they were just going to get too big. As you can see here, they've uh, taken hold of my new fence, and they're already in the ditch out front. And so this is going to become a, a drive-by pick-your-own pretty quick. Beauty. Beautiful mm -hmm. beauty. My brand new Hein Shimmer apple tree is growing really well. This is taking off beautifully. I'm extremely happy about it. Um, and I don't have any damage from the stupid rose beetles much on it because we put in a solar collector with Christmas tree lights all over the tree. These little lights keep the beetles from wanting to chew the tree up at night. Well, this has been successful. Here's Ellen's Anthurium garden uh, with other shade plants, orchids and such that she's planted under the big kukui nut. Now, right here is perennial peanut used as a ground cover. Uh, I got some uh, plugs started in mud flats and then she took them and put them in here and this is taking off really nice. It's really spreading. I need to get it everywhere. The pigs don't like it. They don't dig in it. So that's a good thing. Well, that's all there is to it today. I want to go sit down. Aloha, thanks for watching, and happy gardening.